Let's take a look at some of the signing slash trades the Red Sox have made that have gone under the radar over the last month or so. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin, and unfortunately, there really hasn't been any real big splashes by the Boston Red Sox this offseason, but that doesn't mean that there isn't anything going on. In fact, over the last couple of months, they've been really supplementing a lot of their depth in their system with signings throughout the offseason. We've had a couple of videos on this channel already going over some of the other players you may have missed this offseason. We've been doing these monthly. This is going to be the third iteration, so if you'd like to see any of the other signings or reagents or anything like that the Red Sox have picked up that have gone under the radar you can take a look in the description of this video but today what we are doing is we are talking about the most recent signings slash trades the Red Sox have made who they are how they got here how they could possibly impact this team in 2024 and possibly beyond and we're going to be talking about what all this means for the Red Sox but before we get into that the road to 10,000 subscribers is on you guys have been fantastic we're already within a thousand subscribers towards our goal of 10,000. So if you're new here, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Honestly, even by Red Sox standards, it's been a pretty slow month. They haven't added a ton of depth pieces during the month of January and into February, but there are a couple of guys on this list that I think are interesting enough to talk about. And the first one is a right-handed relief pitcher by the name of Melvin Adone, who's picked up just a couple of days ago by the Boston Red Sox on a minor league contract. The reason he's so interesting is because this dude is an absolute flame thrower. His sinker regularly sits around 100 miles an hour and can reach speeds up to 101 miles an hour and that combined with a wipeout mid 90 slider led to a lot of swing and miss last year in triple a or an 11.3 strikeouts per nine in over 40 innings the issue with a is that he has absolutely no idea where this sinker is going the fact that he doesn't have any command led to an astronomical 8.3 walks per nine and that led to a 2.1 whip basically every time he got onto the mound for every inning he pitched he was allowing two batters to reach base every single inning. That's a lot of traffic on the base pass and certainly did not help his ERA, which over those 40 innings sat around 7.43. Not exactly great statistics overall, but there's a ton of really interesting potential here, and it's basically a no-risk, high-reward situation for the Boston Red Sox. He's sitting in AAA, meaning he's kind of close to Major League Ready, and if they can figure out the command issues, he could be a really interesting get for this team. Another thing that I find really Really interesting about this signing is that he came from the Giants organization. Obviously, Andrew Bailey did the same thing, and I'm curious to see whether or not this is someone that Andrew Bailey said, hey, Craig, this guy's available, this guy's a no-risk contract, and here's what I think he could be, and that's why they picked him up. Now, there's no confirmation of this. It's a really interesting coincidence at the bare minimum that both of them came from the Giants system. In terms of possible impact with the Boston Red Sox, that's going to depend on how the Red Sox are able to adjust his his command issues. If they're able to figure it out and he's able to get that 8.3 even cut in half to about four, he could be someone that we see at some point in the Red Sox bullpen. Because of that swing and miss potential, if he's able to minimize his walks, he could be a really deadly weapon. Problem is, we don't know if he's going to be able to figure out that command issue. If he's not, this is someone who we probably will never see at the major league level. But because that potential is there, he's definitely someone to at least keep an eye on going into 2020. 24, especially if we get injuries in the bullpen and we get poor performance from guys on the back half of this roster. So I think while Melvin Adone isn't someone to really get excited about, he could be someone that could make an impact, especially because he's no risk, high reward. The second player on this list is actually the first trade we've talked about in this video, and that is a trade with the New York Mets, cash considerations to the Mets, with the Red Sox receiving a catcher by the name of Tyler Heineman. Now, Heineman's big highlight here is that at the major league level, he's been a really solid defender, posting five defensive runs saved over his short time in the big leagues. He also had a decent year at the plate last year as well, in a relatively small sample size of just 42 games between the Pirates and the Blue Jays. Last 
last season, he posted a 237 average with a 383 on base percentage and a 319 slug, good for a 98 OPS plus, or just about 2% below league average production. So right around that league average mark at the plate for Tyler Heineman, and combined with his, the fact that he was a really solid defender at the major league level, makes this guy a pretty interesting pickup for the Red Sox. Now, notably, this is the only player on this list that was actually added to the Red Sox 40-man roster. The other guys were just minor league contracts. Tyler Heineman was added and Max Castillo was DFA'd. To be honest with you, I don't really know much about Max Castillo. I don't even really remember him being added to the 40-man roster. He could have been on one of these, hey, under-the-radar pickups that the Red Sox had videos. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, he is no longer with this team or at least no longer on the 40-man roster. But in my opinion, I actually really like this Tyler Heineman signing. I know it may seem small and insignificant, but it could have a decent amount of impact on the 2024 club. The biggest reason for that, in my opinion, is because do you remember last year when Reese McGuire got hurt and Jorge Alfaro was called up from the Red Sox minor league system? Just how bad he was defensively. It wasn't fun to watch. I'm sure the Red Sox did not enjoy that, and it's definitely not something we as fans want to see repeated. Having this sort of depth in the catching position now on the 40-man roster allows you to, at the bare minimum, have someone who is competent enough to be solid behind the dish in case of injury or poor performance or anything like that. So that's the first reason why I think this is actually a decent pickup. On top of that, I also think this could somewhat indicate that the Red Sox aren't entirely pleased with their catching tandem right now. This is now the third catcher the Red Sox have picked up this offseason, one via the Rule 5 draft, one via free agent signing by the name of Roberto Perez, and now you've got a trade for a catcher as well, and this one was actually added to your 40-man roster. On top of that, the sort of last reason I think this was a good signing is because going into the offseason, the Red Sox said that they weren't entirely pleased with the performance of their AAA pitchers. Now, does this have anything to do with the coaching or the catching? I'm not entirely sure, but clearly the Red Sox want to get some solid defensive catchers in AAA to help turn this problem around and help these AAA pitchers perform a bit better once they get to this level. You also have Kyle Teal, who's making his way up to AAA. Having someone in this system that has major league experience like Roberto Perez or Tyler Heineman now, who has been a solid defensive catcher, knows how to call a major league game, is really important to Kyle Teal's development as well. So while this may seem insignificant and really, really small, I think this could have some legitimate impact, maybe not on the major league team immediately, but as pitchers who are at the AAA level make their way up to the major leagues, we could see that impact. And again, this is now sort of your third string catcher. This was the only other catcher added to the 40-man roster outside of Reese McGuire and Connor Wong. This is the guy, either of those guys get injured, is going to come up and take their place. Now, the final player on this list of players you may have missed the Red Sox picking up is utility infielder Joe Dunnan, who signed a minor league contract with the Boston Red Sox at the very end of January. Now, technically, Joe is listed as a shortstop on the Red Sox transaction page, but the reason I'm calling him a utility infielder is because in his time at the major league level, which granted is a very small sample size of just three games, he did not play a single game at shortstop. Instead, he spent his time at both third base and second base. Now, obviously, this is an extremely small sample size, so we aren't going to focus on this too much, but what this does indicate is that he can play all over the diamond on the infield. This is another infield utility depth pickup for the Red Sox. I know it seems redundant, but the Red Sox did make a lot of changes in their minor league system this offseason, either letting people go, letting Rule 5 drafts go, or whatever it was, and they need to replenish that somehow. Joe could be really decent at that. Now, one thing to note about Joe is that he actually had a really solid season in in AAA at the plate for the Miami Marlins. He hit 268 with a 362 on base percentage and a 481 slug, good for an 844 OPS over basically a full season down there in 95 games. He also put out 17 homers and 19 doubles in that AAA system. In his three games at the major league level, which again, super small sample size, he did have a home run, hit 300 with a 364 on base percentage and a 700 slug. It's three games really hard to say whether he was successful or unsuccessful at the big league level, but having a home run and hitting that well in three games, 
is something to at least take note of. Joe, in my opinion, in terms of impact with the Major League roster, isn't going to have a ton. The Red Sox have a whole bunch of middle infield options right now. They also have some pretty decent utility depth, both at the Major League level and the Minor League level. But like we talked about in our last roster move video, this is the type of player that you build a safety net with, right? If, say, Pablo Reyes gets injured or David Hamilton or Manuel Valdez or, heaven forbid, Trevor Story or Von Grissom, you need someone who's sort of the fifth, sixth in line to come up and make a difference. Joe Dunnan could be that type of player. Again, really solid at the plate, can play all over defensively. Never a bad thing to have this sort of depth in your minor league system. So while I don't think this is going to be someone who's going to be starting the year on the major league roster or someone who I would want to see at the major league level because that means that there were either injuries or really poor performance during 2024, it's always nice to have these sort of guys in your system to be able to call upon if absolute need be. It's the break glass in case of emergency type pickup that the Red Sox have been really focused on this offseason. Overall, when we take a look at these lists as a whole, clearly these guys aren't going to be starting in left field or starting at shortstop or making the opening day rotation, right? That's just not what these under the radar type pickups are going to be. Most realistically, they probably won't have that big of an impact on the major league club. That's sort of the point of these videos. But I do think of the episodes we've made in this series for the Red Sox, this is a list of guys who could have a lot of potential. You've got Heineman, who is now your third string catcher of all three of these guys this is the one who's most likely going to have some sort of impact on the Red Sox in 2024 he's the only one on the 40-man roster and if we get a situation like last year where Reese McGuire or Connor Wong go down he's the one who's next in line so in my opinion he's the one to pay the most attention to but you take a look at the other two guys on this list Melvin Adone the flamethrower who if you can figure out his command issues at the AAA level maybe with these experienced veteran D decent defending catchers, he could be a weapon for the Red Sox at some point this year. Someone who sort of comes out of nowhere with an injury or a poor performance and really makes a name for himself at the major league level. Again, no risk, high reward there with a don. And Joe is more utility defense depth that the Red Sox are building a net around. Again, you hope that you don't have to use these guys, but it's nice to have them if you do. But this is just my opinion on everything. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think of these underrated pickups? Who do you think has the most potential on this list? Who do you think could have the highest impact on this list? And do you care at all about any of these pickups? Let me know all your thoughts on Red Sox signings and trades you may have missed in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, remember we are less than a thousand subscribers away from that 10,000 subscriber mark. So if you're new here, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button. We talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one and i will see you in the red seats